So I've got a set of circumstances where I'm just doing a consult and it's related to a business that is trying to determine if who they've been paying as independent contractors, should they pay them as employees? Now, we're in a set of circumstances where we've got a million dollars being reported on 1099 NEC going out to individuals. So there's a lot of exposure here to start with. So the first thing I told them is that here's what we're risking by getting it wrong. If you take that million dollars and if they were all employees, the IRS really easily would say, well, Social Security and Medicare should have been withheld. It wasn't. So you owe that. And Social Security and Medicare was to be matched. You didn't. So you owe that. That's a 15.3% amount, right? So yes, there's limits in this, this, and this, but easy math, $150,000. But if you'll just triple that, that's what they would owe. That's what they're risking in this decision, about $450,000. How? JJ, the CPA is here. JJ, the CPA here. Hope you're doing well. So this 450,000, how do we get to that number and how quick did it go up? Holy smokes. Well, I told you the math on the 15%, but with this, there's a trust fund penalty. It's a 100% penalty. So 150,000 tax due, boom, the penalty is 150,000. Now we're at 300 grand. You have material understatement, there's a 25% penalty. You have late payment penalty, underpayment penalty, there's another five and another 5%. Now you have interest on top of that. Now you have penalties for not properly filing W-2s, didn't file them timely, late file penalties on the W-2, incorrectly filing on a Form 1099. Presto, basically what is 15.3% of whatever you're paying independent contractors? Take that amount times three, and that is the exposure. And so what I tell them is your exposure is 450,000. But how would you get around this? Well, by making them employees. And I get that business owners go, well, but that's going to cost me more. But I want you to hear one thing. The cost of having an employee at its basic amount is 7.65% on top of what you're paying them in wages. Yes, there are minor little things on top of that. So what I might tell a client is round it to 8%. You have a retirement plan, maybe round it to 10%, 11%. All I'm saying is whatever that percentage is, it is way less than the exposure that you have by treating somebody in properly as an independent contractor. So you pay out 10,000 to an independent contractor. What is your exposure? $4,500. 10,000 times 15%, multiply it by three, easy math, you owe $4,500. If you paid that independent contractor instead, and if required properly as an employee, on the taxes that are Social Security and Medicare, the match, 7.65%, rounded up a few other expenses, maybe it's 10% with employer match on retirement. Well, now that 10,000, yes, it did cost you another thousand, but easy math, a thousand is way less than $4,500. Look at that, so high it's going out of the screen. So when you're now looking at an independent contractor, it's really not that hard. It's just not. It can come down to a few key things. Yes, there are many tests. You can go to Form SS8. I'll give you a link to it. It's what the IRS puts out with a series of questions and tests that you can go through. But here's what you need to know. Someone signing a piece of paper saying they're an independent contractor does not make them an independent contractor. I've served as expert witness multiple times and blew that out of the water because the IRS is only going to look at facts and circumstances. Next, if you have somebody that's an independent contractor and you have them fill out a Form W-9, Form W-9 is for somebody that's an independent contractor. They're not an employee. So that W-9 is then them simply disclosing their name and their address and their EIN so that you can send them a 1099. That does not mean they're an independent contractor. Again, very recently served as expert witness and was able to show the judge 
simply that filing or having somebody sign a W-9 doesn't make them an independent contractor. All it does is provide their name and address and EIN. If you're now looking at what's a bright line test, many times what it comes down to in court, so when I've served as expert witness, the big thing that it comes down to is this. Is that worker doing these services for anybody else? And if the answer is no, then most likely they're going to be very easily deemed your employee. See, an independent contractor is somebody that's providing whatever services they are doing, but to multiple businesses. Next, let's just say they go, well, no, they're not doing it for anybody else, but you know, they're just working like 15 hours a week. Next we go, well, do they have any independence related to this? Now, many, because of the pandemic, think, well, yeah, I, they work at home, uh, they work on their own computer, they work when they want. That doesn't really come into play. Now, it can, but that alone doesn't make somebody an independent contractor. Because next, what you're looking at is, though, are they taking what you're providing to them and giving you exactly what it is that you're requesting over and over and over and over. See, if it's a business, you say, hey, I want a birdhouse, right? And then they're gonna build a birdhouse and then they're gonna sell it to you. But if you have somebody and you're like, hey, I wanna have you help me build birdhouses for my customers, but you got your own workshop, your own tools, you're gonna use your own garage, uh, I just need 10 birdhouses this month. Well, if that person's not building birdhouses for anybody else, even though they're only doing 10 in a month, but you now are saying, but I need it to be this pitch on the roof. I need it to be this color with a hole here and a perch there and this on the back side, and this to be able to hold you know, the feed, et cetera, et cetera. And here are the exact specifications. Well, that starts to be control of what that person is doing. Now you're right. And I don't even understand why it's an emotional issue. You could come up with all kinds of arguments how somebody that's building birdhouses is an independent contractor. But it would probably be facts and circumstances that they do birdhouses for other people. It would be facts and circumstances where they're providing that birdhouse out of their own materials and making a profit on it. So that's the third thing that a lot of times will be looked at is, did they generate a profit? Meaning, did they take on costs and have room to determine how much they actually netted? And so, in a circumstance, if you go, listen, I'm going to just pay you $500 for every birdhouse that you build. You get the materials. Give me what I'm outputting. Okay, that might start to walk and talk like that's an independent contractor. That's a small business owner because I'm giving them a flat $500. It's up to them to come up with the supplies. So they might net $300 or $200, etc. Versus if you go, well, listen, I got all the supplies. Here you go. And I'll pay you $15 an hour to work on the birdhouses. So facts and circumstances come into play. But just because you give them flexibility of their time never in itself creates the opportunity for somebody to be treated as an independent contractor. Them working from home never in itself is going to lead to them being considered an independent contractor. With all of these facts and circumstances, I go back to what I told you in the beginning. What are you really risking here? you're risking 45% versus 10%. And every day of the week, you go with the 10%. Here's the thing I tell clients when we would have these discussions in the past. Doesn't really come up much now with my clients, all, all of us being older and mature and we're just treating everybody as employees. But with that, back when we were really doing startup and trying to figure these things out, and we're like, well, are they an independent contractor? Well, what I started to realize and working with a team and attorneys and working with payroll company, boop, ADP, what we're looking at here is actually when an employee is an employee, then the employer can better protect what it is that employee's working on. They have more control over it. They have control on what that employee can and cannot have access to. They have control on when they get it back. So you actually are better protecting your business when you have an employee working for you. The other aspect is, is that with having an employee, there are other credits you can take advantage of where independent contractors, you don't get that. 
There are other types of benefits related to all kinds of things that are all based on you having employees. The movement moving forward in the IRS is very much ensuring that workers are properly classified, whether it's independent contractor or employees. So if you really are questioning it, again, go to SSA, you walk it through. I've never done this, but you actually can send in the form SSA to the IRS and they'll do a determination with you, assuming you've provided all the facts and circumstances that are true, correct, and accurate and complete. But that will get you to whatever the result is. But where I got to probably 15 years ago with my clients is, hey, when in doubt, just make them an employee. You got them covered, all the benefits that go along with that, better protected, your business is better protected, and we're not risking 45% and it's only costing you 10%. And the final word for business owners is you just take that into account as one of your costs. And what I remind my clients is you're in control of what you make, as in the net. And the biggest way you control your net is how you take care of the top line. So if you say, well, I don't think I can afford to pay these uh, independent contractors as an employee because I can't take on the extra 10% of that cost. My response would be simply, well, then you're not charging enough. You need to charge more, period, the end. And if they say, well, I can't charge more than I, well, then you need to do it on less employees. You can't now say, well, I don't want to do that because it's going to cost me. You just have to simply follow the rules. Now, many businesses don't know this. You really give the shaft a slap across the beak, a spanking, kicking them, scraping up the knees on an independent contractor. You're treating them like a dog. You really are if they're not an independent contractor. And you know why? Because when they're an employee, they have 7.65% withheld from their wages, which is Social Security and Medicare taxes. And you're matching that as the employer, 7.65%. So 15.3% goes into the government based on the wages. So you look at your independent contractor, you slap them like a dog, and you say, here's your pay. And then when they go file the taxes, they now have to pay your portion of those payroll taxes, but it's not called payroll tax. It's called self-employment taxes. Self-employment taxes are magically the exact same tax and the exact same combined rate, 15.3%. So as an independent contractor, if they're an employee, you pay them 10 grand, 7.65% gets withheld. That's what they net. When you pay them as an independent contractor, and if you're doing it incorrectly, well, they are definitely making less. They got the 10,000, and now you've stuck them with the whole bill for the Social Security and Medicare taxes. So now they're netting basically 85%. And that's why I would say you're treating them like a dog. Now, who are you not treating like a dog, right? Someone who's truly an independent contractor. Somebody that has their own side gig and they're doing this for other people. Well, you're not treating that person like a dog. But you are treating somebody like a dog if they are only working for you that they don't have an opportunity to make a profit. It doesn't matter, in my opinion, what excuse you want to give yourself. It's just not good business. You want to classify them properly, not because even the IRS said so. You want to classify them properly to protect your business, to do right by those workers. And then I really put it right back to the business owner. Then basically pony up. Um, what we'd say in Oklahoma is, Man up, okay? I You say this to a man or a woman. And charge more to your client. Stop whining and sniveling and passing things on to your workers related to this. Are you kidding me? Grow up and be a business owner and charge what it is that you need to charge. Because if you're not able to afford something, you're not charging enough. And somehow you think you're running a charity and you're not. You're running a business. So hopefully what you've heard full circle is slapping you up maybe across your face. I don't mean to. Okay, It's just how I talk to my clients. And saying, hey, now it's time to be a real business. And go, you know what? If you're an employee, we're going to treat you as an employee. And 
Well, if we can't afford that, then we're going to be a big person business and we're going to make sure that our clients are paying us properly. Now, somebody's like, oh, well, I don't know if I can charge that to my client. I mean, I mean, that's not somebody that's in business. That's somebody that's running a charity, right? And if you can't afford to pay them, then you need to do more work for yourself. All right, I digress. So how do you make sure you're doing these things correctly? Boop, ADP, call my team. All right, hey, thanks for tuning in. Love it if you'd subscribe. And then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. You have a great one. I'm not a CPA.